Hey, how's it going? So, um, oh, first look at my signs, please. So, <clears throat> I'm still wanting to talk about help and helping. And now it's going to get, well, kind of dark and a little unhappy. But it seems to be a thing. Um, I'll start off by talking about... Uh, I watched some videos yesterday in... The first one I watched was about alien abductions or ET abductions of people. And one of the stories was interesting because it just kept sort of recurring. And it was an older story that I wasn't familiar with. And it talked about some people in like Tennessee or something like that, or Kentucky, some somewhere in that Southern area of hollows and like and crystals grow there. So I think that's something that really attracts the ETs to the area, but that's just, uh, something that I just, uh, that occurred to me. It wasn't in, like, this show. But anyway, these people were visited by these ETs, and the way they look really struck struck me, because they wore, like, a, I want to call it a onesie, but an all-in-one coverall that left their faces open. And I've only seen this in a couple of depictions of these types of stories, where the ETs seem to have some sort of radio transmitter attached to their headwear and it's like a cup like thing over their ear like a headphone earphone with a little antenna coming out of it which seems really old-fashioned for like spaceship driving people but that's what these were and but it was their faces that was so interesting because generally it's grays and it's become more commonly known that the greys are generally not actual beings. They're more like bio-robots that they can send on remote missions to drive uh, drone ships and make observations and things like that. They're not like, they're not meant to be detached from the ship, I guess, because the ship is how they get their nutrients. Uh, but they're not, like, I guess when uh, they're out of the ships and they try to the government tried to like examine some and take them in they just didn't last long they would just like run out of power like their batteries would run out and die and, and they just they would die but they weren't like alive really it's a weird thing but this whole thing is a weird thing but so greys look a certain way they have like the big eyes that are black and some places you'll hear that they actually wear a sun shield. They're like caps over the eyes. Uh, like when you see about alien uh, autopsies, which was also something that kept coming up. But these particular aliens with the ear thing and the antenna look different. Like the greys don't generally have much of a nose in, in a lot of things they just have slits and no like proboscis sticking out you know but these had little elfin noses uh, well there's lots of different greys I guess but these aliens with these earphones and uh, onesies were not greys they I mean they may have had like a grayish tinge but I think they were greenish gray as well was part of the description and then their noses they had noses and they were sort of flat and wide but small they were taller than a general description of gray so these were like maybe five feet tall maybe a little more and they had like mouths too they lipless mainly but um more prominent than like on a gray and these were not like bio pods out these were like beings so um 
what happened with that story is not what struck me as much as their appearance because I, I watched three things um, and boy I wish I could remember what they are now I should have checked that before I started well let me see I, I think I might have linked them in my previous video so let me just check that I know I should be able to remember. I just did it yesterday, but nope. <laughs> it's almost like as soon as I do these things, they kind of go right out of my head, whatever I said. So, yeah. Um, let me see here. Oh, whoops. I don't want to do that. Uh, oops, I'm looking in the wrong place. Hold on, I'm, I'm being... I gotta go to the other YouTube, to the studio, so I can look at this. What did I say? Okay, so. Oh, I didn't link anything. Shoot. Okay. I have one other place I can look. Gosh, I can't believe I didn't. It just like write this down. I can't believe I don't remember. This was just yesterday. Okay, so now I have to check my history. And, oh boy, so. <laughs> shoot. Well, I'm just going to skip ahead because I, I, I don't want to look. It's going to take me too long to find it. So. I'm going to skip ahead to Above Majestic, which is a movie that I found on YouTube for free. So I'm going to, if I can find it again, because I can't always find stuff in my history. I don't know why it is. Like, stuff that should be there just sometimes is not. But you know the name of it, so if you want to see it that bad, you can find it. So Above Majestic, and it talks about the super soldier program but so much more so the super soldier program is part of the space force which the general public is aware of now because donald trump came along and well he rebranded it as if he came up with the idea and the whole thing was his invention but it existed way more longer than Trump's presidency or Trump's even knowledge of this stuff because somehow their messiah don't know nothing about anything he's they say he's smart he says he's smart which smart people don't do like I, perception is a weird thing I feel like I see him for exactly what he is very clearly but then so do his followers and not just the mega weirdos there's like people I don't think they associate themselves with MAGA because they don't come across as the smartest group of people. So I don't think they want to be sucked into that group. But sorry, like if you think Trump is a good guy, you're sucked in because, well, in my opinion, like I just disagree with so much that they think is right and good about the guy. Like everything I feel like about him is goes against right and good but like I said that's my opinion and my perception all of these people do not agree with it so I wrote some notes I'm just going to read you what I wrote because I already said it here so here we go Above Majestic is a documentary that showcases the myopic views taken by a very QAnon affected section of ex-government types it tells some stories that are a blend of reality and what sounds like fantasy it's actually kind of hard to separate. It talks about super soldiers and the secret space force, which Trump, who somehow became their leader. Oh, I, I, that's what I was talking about. See, I didn't even finish the sentence here. So I was gonna say what I just said. Somehow Trump like became the leader of it, but he just rebranded it, okay? I need to add that because I think I'm gonna put this in my Wix uh, website as well 
Come on, look like an H or I won't be able to re... Okay, that doesn't work. Rebranded. Okay. So, still talking about Above Majestic, the movie. It's on YouTube for free, and I'll link it because you really need to see it for yourself. Like, whatever I'm saying, don't listen. You might not be inclined to anyway, but I'm just saying before you watch this movie... I don't even know if it matters what I said, because once you see it, if you go look at it, you just your mind is going to be so blown. You're going to be like, forget what she said. I'm having my own impressions now, and this is some weird shit. So, <laughs> the reason I find it no noteworthy is because I know the U.S. government keeps things from its citizens. It's created a global gag order on... UAPs or those objects that fly in the air or move in bodies of water that are not identifiable like where it came from who who it came from who's flying it and then there's confusion in that too because well I'll go on but I'll just interrupt myself to say here like the US government has received help from ETs um there's groups they've had conversations with. There's groups they have ongoing partnerships with. But you're not going to hear them tell you, uh, not outwardly, not openly. Let me go on. So, um, where was I? The reason given isn't the fear of frightening the general public. Or even for public safety. That's what they tell us, but that's not why. The reason why we don't get told stuff is so that the secrets don't get out to other secret intelligence agencies and military programs and all of that. Like, it's all about spy stuff, not letting information get out. They really could care less if we knew the information and it scared us or not. Like, it could cause a mass panic if they told everybody what was real, but... A, how long is that going to last? Like, you panics end. And I would think pretty quickly because it's just this huge expenditure of energy and emotion that, like, you're exhausted pretty quickly after you do that. So, like, it's just going to sputter out. And people be freaked out and afraid, but aren't we already that way all the time anyway? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, we know that they keep stuff from us. We know that they lie to us. And, you know, that's that's kind of where they like to keep it information-wise with us. So, back to my notes here. It's to keep top secrets that way. It also blames the left for everything. And it's weird because it doesn't say specifically what they've done. They'll just do that thing where, like... They'll basically insinuate something bad has happened or something bad that did happen is the fault of the left. And they make it like it's just universal, uniformly the case, which is ridiculous. That just... <laughs> like, statistically, that's wrong. Like, being from one political party or another is not going to have much of an effect on a person who wants to do something or wants to learn something or wants to be something i'd like the party if they're gonna not do good it the party don't really matter so it's just stupid to say it's all the democrats fault but that's not what they do they say something is negative sort of like they insinuate it they don't have like this is why they're bad this is reason one two three and four specifically why they're bad and wrong that they never do that not in this movie not on TV. Like, it's just so dumb. So, what they do in the movies, they'll say something negative, and then they'll show a picture of, like, Bill and Hillary Clinton, or else they'll show a picture of other Democrats, but they don't show, like I said, they don't give you any details about why it's bad and wrong. You're just supposed to be all, yeah, Democrats, bad, wrong. That's like a majestic thing. I've said this before. The government has per perfected the program so much that it's built into like all of our advertising 
there's one thing I totally agree with that Corey Good says here, and he says that all, everything we know is wrong. Like all of the history is wrong because there's so much that has been re edited out, removed, deleted. Um, and luckily, thankfully for you, like there's YouTube, which is a great repository of the kind of information that sheds light on this kind of things that are obscured and hidden from us. So, oh, getting all worked up. <laughs> Hold on, let me go back to what I was doing. So, um, so it's to keep top secrets that way. They, it also blames the left for everything. All the ills in the world are... Oh, they get blamed for all the ills of the world. And the right, comma, Republicans... Oh, sorry, you don't need to hear a comma. <laughs> the right... Republicans and conservatives are all in the right morally. <laughs> They're just correct, which is ridiculous. That nothing across the board is like totally right and perfect or right and correct. That's that's just not how things work at all ever in the world. Like what are you talking about? <laughs> There's always some shading. There's always some gray. Especially in that spy government stuff, man. It's all kinds of great. And not moral. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this, like, the right is just correct morally. No, <laughs> sorry. This, while Trump and the right are repeatedly saying how they want to take rights away from minorities and women. Pretty thick-headed, in my opinion. <laughs> So I have said the sector of I have said that's I have said that that sector of society is lying to themselves and everyone else. For instance, Corey Good, the star of the movie and former super soldier, talks about being scooped up by the government as a teen and made a recruit in the Twenty and Back program. He says that at seventeen they had him signing all kinds of NDAs and waivers and all kinds of stuff like that, and it's like. He's not old enough by law on earth, I guess, to even be signing anything like that. And the fact that they have him doing it not on earth or not within the confines of earth law, I guess, what what validity does it even have? That's just a mind trip on a 17-year-old kid that doesn't know better, that doesn't know... Like, he says that the government would snatch up certain vulnerable types, like they have to have like certain characteristics or talents, which he doesn't come out and say it, but that would be the psychic stuff, like some kind of intuition, like the ability to remote view or be a psychic medium, something along those lines. And then you, like, like you're physically as a specimen, you have to be decent, I guess. But <clears throat> at no point does he have a choice is he informed about anything? And so, that's just wrong. What is good and right and moral about that? Like, if it's supposed to be helping the people of Earth or the government, it, but it's a big secret, it's like, come on. That sounds like a bunch of bull to me. So, anyway. <clears throat> uh, Corey Good talks about being scooped up by the government as a teen and made a recruit in the 20 and Back program. To me, he describes that in the movie, the 20 and Back program. To me, there lies myopia. He tells of essentially being kidnapped and how the people on the left are the, uh, whoa, <laughs> that's not the next page, there it is. People on the left are the Luciferians. But I don't see how all of the sides are able to discriminate and separate who in the government, especially at the levels of rank and secrecy, the left from the right. Who knows which are the evil ones, Luciferian or not. And that Luciferian thing is interesting that it came up because th this is a part of it. This is why it keeps coming up with me is the whole uh, P. Diddy thing that was on fire online for a few uh, 
couple of months, I think, at least. And then I lost interest because it went into the investigative phase and basically nothing's happening but speculation, so I stopped listening. But the point is, is that Diddy was having these parties for entertainers, lawyers, like anyone attracted by stardom, basically, to come to his parties, these white parties, and on one level they were party, and they're white parties because everyone was supposed to wear white clothes. Stupid Labor Day fashion thing or something. It's just stupid, fluffy, who cares, but... On one level it was like it's a party, music, lots of drinking, and I'm assuming lots of drugs too. Well, I don't have to assume because they talk about it. I'll get to that. So, but after hours like after a certain time of night when people would be like kind of really hammered if they'd been there for a while and low on inhibitions and also especially for like the women the young women the liquor was drugged <laughs> and the drugs were drugged <laughs> just like a total blackmail situation and that's totally what it was and it's, it was all about getting people in compromising positions and then making a record of it. So there were cameras and microphones all throughout his homes. All of his homes. So the guy was constantly doing this, spying on people, but also putting them in compromising positions so that they look bad. And films can be edited. Recordings of sound can be edited. So... That's, I guess, the Luciferian thing. Catch you basically unawares, although, God, how do people just let that news go untold for so long and then so many people still went? That's the thing. It's like this whole situation of blackmail where you don't want to say anything because you've been caught, sometimes forced into... A position that would just make you look bad and many of these people don't want to lose their careers got their careers because they had to do some compromising thing but you don't know it until you get there it's not like you spend your whole life preparing to be an actor or some sort of dancer or musician to go to some damn party and find out that you, you can't, like, go on doing what you were doing unless you do this terrible thing. And then if you refuse, I don't know, they find ways to get you. And that's apparently a widespread uh, way to get people, to manipulate people. Like, apparently everyone that's in the government has had this used against them. Like, and it makes so much sense when people behave so oddly once they are trying to get into the government and then they get in there and they become different people. Well, here's a reason why. If everyone is blackmailed, they're limited to what they can do. They're not going to be allowed to do the things they said they wanted to do or were planning to do because when you get there, the government is like, oh, no, 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 no. You're going to do what we say, like votes, schmotes. And that sucks, but that seems to be the reality. So it's like everywhere. Everyone famous has had something compromising done to them or with them and then a record was made of it so it could be used against them. That's gross, but I guess that's the Luciferian system. And then the Luciferians, they're just, I mean, pfft, I don't know who else is doing this because I don't think it's just the Luciferians. I think it's just a thing where degrading humans and the human body and animals and doing everything that is like against nature is the thing that they get you to do so they can manipulate you and the government does it in a different way i guess but then if there's luciferians in there they're doing it the same way like really what's the difference what's the difference between them being luciferians and doing it to you and then whatever the other people are with the, Dra the dracos so it's all like <laughs> It's all like a bad scene. And it occurs to me right now, there's somebody above all of this stuff that is controlling everybody that's doing that. So, what, you know, it's like, it just never stops. There's all these layers. But like I was saying about help, there's layers to that too. Sometimes you end up helping when you don't want to or mean to. You're just kind of 
forced into a situation. So, okay, now I totally sidetracked. Let me get back to my notes. <clears throat> if I can find my place. Uh, okay, so the last thing I was talking about was you can't, I don't think you can tell Luciferians from Draconians if that's the other side. I don't even know that there's just two. I think there's so many people so many like lines of force crossing and you know mixing and evolving and it's just ugh, it's too much <clears throat> okay so there's something else i have met online i've met online two people who were also unwilling recruits of the majestic program um one who talked a lot about their embedded programming and what he was sent out in the world to do. A lot involved seduction and lewd behavior and other details he'd unburied from his subconscious. Painfully, by the way, because he wasn't supposed to, so he's undoing this. Actually, this is like a really strong person, and I see why the government would have chosen him. Because it's to un to break free of that programming all on your own, like, that's massive. That's, like, I mean, I don't know the details of how that programming works, but it's got to be pretty intense if it can have people go out and do stuff that they don't even know what they went out and did. Like, I, he, he some stuff he wouldn't talk about, like, sexual stuff, uh for some reason when he would talk about that even it didn't seem like there was a point to it but he was sent out to do it for a reason to seduce someone or i mean i guess that's the way to get in and find out some piece of information so he didn't have clear memories of that even and then there was other stuff that he knew he went out and did that he didn't specify the details on which I've read enough mystery and horror and detective stories to realize, like, geez, this dude must have come home, like, covered in blood or something and just been like, what did I do, you know? And if you watch enough of these spy documentaries, you start to understand the capabilities of the government and what they can do to people's minds and what they think it's a good idea to go out and do in the name of of the government, the public safety, uh, what is the one they always tell us, the secrecy government thing. I can't remember the f exact phrase, but, you know, for the sake of government safety, we're doing this. It's horrible, but I'm telling you, it's good. I don't think it is, though. <laughs> Sorry, got sidetracked again. So, <clears throat> a lot involves seduction and lewd behavior and other details he'd unburied from his subconscious. Other things he'd only insinuate because I suspect he'd be arrested if found out to be the perpetrator. Mr. Good is on the side of this goal, or this government. That, sorry. Mr. Good is on the side of this government that snatched him up and mistreated him and believes the lines it told him he believes that shit even as he spent years trying to find his way out of oh i didn't i love it when i write letters and i don't write all of it <laughs> find his way <clears throat> out of all of the weeds and deception programmed into him the third is a woman and she i think is part of the program uh like the guy that remembered the lewd activities and the seduction they had her in that program as well and um she's told fewer details but it's plain she's been affected in a bad way like she's obviously traumatized to just to hear her talk about the little that she shared with me uh like i could just tell and you know, like, if you've been traumatized, you can kind of tell if someone else has been. And, whoo, I'm getting all kinds of chills and goosebumps. But, um, the, and the chills and the goosebumps are a verification of truth for me. Like, I believe, I actually believe all of these people. 
that, that something has been done to them. So one thing they all have in common is psychic abilities. This seems a commonality in these recruits, even in different sectors. Because there's remote viewers that are psychics that the government has recruited, often from the ranks of the military. And then also, I guess they have these majestic programs where they've just located people. I'm not sure exactly how that works. But anyway, um, well, lots of spying. There's lots of spying that goes on. Like we have these devices, like I'm recording this on now, and they spy on us on these. So they have their ways of finding people. But anyway, you realize this was done to help these people. Or it was done to these people to help in secret government programs, ops, if you will, often involuntarily, often involuntarily, sorry, that this was all sounding like a bunch of separate words, and really it was just two, often involuntarily. Uh, because even though they aren't still in programs, they can still be triggered to carry out ops, I think remotely. The, they don't know what their triggers are. You know, they don't know what's going to send them off doing God knows what that they only can remember that something happened, that they went and did something, but the details are lost even to them. And that's what they've been going through, recovering memories. Like, I think they've definitely had to use, have to have the help of hypnotists, like uh, memory recovery for stuff like this, but a lot of it comes down to just you sitting there with your thoughts and working through things, and I just think it's amazing that, you know, if it's if there's these three people, there's more. In fact, I know there's more because I've seen other videos of other ones that I didn't develop relationships with that talk about the same kind of stuff. And above Majestic details the kinds of things that the soldiers go in, go through. So I didn't actually finish it. There's still about half an hour, 40 minutes left. But it started getting too QAnon for me. Which means there's a level of probably truth involved. But there's more like propaganda that they're like condition to believe is a true thing and that annoys me because it's like you can't see that's not true you knucklehead <laughs> but again you know my opinion my perception I mine is not going to be the same as somebody else's because that's just not how things work everyone is unique anyway um where was I oh okay so they can still be triggered to carry out the ops and be completely unaware of the actions undertaken while they're doing the op. And it's messed up all of their minds. Like I was just saying, <clears throat> there was a lot of talk about ETs in crop circles. In particular, there's one that warns of a crop circle that warns of strangers from off world bearing gifts. This brings to mind the Vril, the Vril Society, V-R-I-L-L. -L. The Vril were a group of sensitives and psychics that managed to contact an ET group that gives one of the humans, this woman, specs for war weapons, including the Glock, which was the bell-shaped uh, anti-gravity ship, which there's some information about or of Amana, an ancient flying machine depicted in ancient Indian history, like the Bahads. Yeah, I can't think of the pronunciation. Uh, Bhagavad Gita, I think, has the stories with the the Mana, but that's about wars between gods and aliens in India and that's a whole thing that you should probably investigate so if you 
are unfamiliar with this stuff and you put Vimana, V-I-M-A-N-A, -A, into a search bar with your little searchy finger, you will find the information about the Vimanas that I'm talking about. But they were bell-shaped, like ding-ding bell-shaped uh, spacecraft. And like the E.T. ships. Well, actually, I don't know. Like, older accounts have the ships making sounds. But usually they're like, you know, they have something wrong with them. They've been shot at and actually uh, damaged by fire from us, I guess. Or just some kind of malfunction in their engine. Because generally they don't, they're not supposed to have sound. But some of them do make noise in these accounts. So I don't know why that's important to share with you. But there you go. So they were even, the Vril were even provided weapons specs these to be used against their own people and planet so you got these ETs from a different dimension I guess or planet and they're giving us Germans information on how to attack the rest of the world and it's like you have these things that only one side has that's not you know that's not even a war that's just a, a route that's like well let me just continue this brings to mind the, oh sorry I don't want to start there so they were even provided weapon specs these to be used against their own people and planet thanks ETs for helping helping create a terrible one-sided situation but we saw how that turned out. No talk openly that turned out. Oh, sorry. We all know how that turned out. No talk openly of those flying machines or the energy weapons that I guess they were equipped with or that was some of the information that people were given <clears throat> in the real, this woman was given. So, um, you don't really hear talk of that except in some accounts, like if you look at enough YouTube, you will find accounts that do talk about this happened, like spaceships were seen. Like the soldiers, years later when they're about to about to die, will tell you, like, oh yeah, this happened in Vietnam, I saw this, or this happened in Iraq, I saw this, or this happened in Afghanistan, but usually they can't tell you concurrently with the time that it's happening because they're in the employ of the government so they can't there's consequences and then even if you get out and you're no longer in those programs it's not like they can't still find you and eliminate you because you weren't supposed to be talking about something so they tend to be end of life declarations unfortunately and then the younger people you get those too but I think that they're not believed because we're conditioned not to believe stuff like that. Because that would be too much like the truth and that would be wrong. Although, it's not. We're presented with a lot of stuff and we're not presented with whole pictures of things. And then we're also, I think, they just lie to us. <laughs> they lie to us, they don't tell us stuff, we have partial information. Sure, let people wander around like, it could be dangerous, but luckily it's not. I, we, I don't know. <laughs> I do know why we do this to each other, but it's just insane. It just feels crazy. And when I say I do know, it's because we're in the Matrix. And I don't mean the movie. I mean, like, a literal Matrix. Like a lattice. A, a, you know, a, a, like a foundational structure. Not the movie. There are connections, everything is connected in some way, but connections don't necessarily, they're not necessarily close together so that we're able to just look over and go, oh, that's why this, that, and the other thing. Yes, to some degree, but many things in our consciousness, we just don't have access to, and some of it is controlled through man-made decisions, and some of it just isn't, like we're just not capable or we're not for some reason able to to like comprehend certain things or receive certain information 
I don't know, it's a whole thing. But I don't want to get too sidetracked by that. Let me get back to my notes. Uh, so, we saw how that turned out. No talk openly of these flying machines or the energy weapons. Some of why... What? That? Oh, some of why that isn't known to the greater public is discussed. And the rest, well, we're on our own there. Some help that was. <laughs> the war was incredibly damaging for both sides, World War II. And never died a complete death, honestly. Stories about, hi stories and histories with all this BS built to take us down from within. And we so caught up in it all believing the propaganda we just believe it like fools like what good does it do either side to eliminate the other because that's the end goal basically of like re recovering like the Nazi ideals like I, I don't even want to call them ideals because they're just destructive I think Ideals are hopeful and productive thoughts, and that's not what the Nazis wanted. They just wanted to, like, end whole, like, ethnicities, and that's crazy. Like, you but always, it comes to me, like, why would you do that to somebody? Do you want that done to you? Because, I mean, wish for it hard enough. <laughs> You can have it. You too could be eliminated. Why would you want that? That's it's like a no-win situation. Like you, you end up just eliminating everybody, and then what are you left with? Just you, you what? You're just gonna eliminate yourself? That's stupid. <laughs> so anyway, I'll carry on uh, if I can find my place. The real mission is to find our way to love, of ourselves and each other. Put all other details away. They are meaningless, harmful to us. But not love, it doesn't have any of that. The other, the help from the aliens, didn't work out so well, did it? That's the lesson, I think. Why the Nazis in the Confederacy failed, the US Confederacy from the Civil War. They are foul systems that ran counter to nature, our true nature. Why else are the groups that cling to those ideologies so angry and mean and vengeful? I don't know, it's a them problem. <laughs> One that has a hard time with love and kindness and generosity just because. Generosity just because. The kind of feelings we do generate, oh sorry, the kind of feelings that do generate love and hope and all things in a good light. Oops. <laughs> oh, shoot. In a doc about ET encounters, it was about a group. Sorry, I, I wrote that really badly. So I watched this doc about ET encounters and it was about, whoops. <laughs> well, you think the paper had a life of its own? It's all trying to jump out of my hands. I forgot to write the it in there. It was about a group that landed, and it was an old account from back in the 40s or 30s even, maybe. But these ETs were, wore coveralls with just the face exposed and an insignia not from the Galactic Federation, but one that turned out to be a Draco insignia. So in Draco as in dragon as in uh, reptilian. The reptilians from off planet who are not our friends, they did embody the prevalent attitude for the American right though. So you sunshine that is in reality propaganda and trash. They are lies. Here you in an what? Oh, lure you in 
and suddenly you're in a bad situation, kidnapped and weird stuff done to you, or worse, taken off planet by an agreement you were not aware of or a willing party to, all due to a program of self-service by that definition is not your own. Oh, sorry. All due to a program of self-service that by definition is not your own. So it's not serving you personally. You're just a pawn. There's a lot of unbelievable shit covered in that movie, but the salt grain is what kept us as oh kept from us but the salt grain is what's kept from us as we the innocent and ignorant pawns in these situations oh as we are the ignorant and in look apparently some deals were made with some et races and some it was agreed that some humans were allowed to just be snatched up off the planet and taken away for God knows what reason. Corey Good talks about it a little bit. Some of it is human slavery, but some of it is the desire for the human way of thinking because apparently we have a certain way of thinking that is like, we can't be kept down. We will think our way out of a box or we'll just there's something to us that we have a way of thinking that apparently ETs don't, so humans are prized for that, but that's not necessarily great either. Like, he didn't go into whether these people having been basically ripped from their lives on their home planet, how are they doing today? Like, are they okay? Are they treated well? Are they happy? Do they like their life now? Are you can it like what is happening? Do we get to know that? No. I don't know if he knows those answers, but like I said, gotta have your grain of salt ready, and that's why my grain is always the size of a boulder. Remember, we get polluted oh so, okay. Okay, back to the notes. Remember, we get polluted upon and killer drugs unleashed upon us in full knowledge of the negative capabilities. And that's just the one, just the on earth stuff. We know these things are true. So this is just on earth stuff. This is not like the, what happens if you get snatched that we don't know a dang thing about stuff. Uh. I have enough of the sensitivity to have seen some paranormal shit, so my salt grain is larger. Not large enough <laughs> to become of interest as a majestic subject, thank goodness, but the unpleasantness is freely given all around. Who and what does this help? At one point in the film, David Wilcock, who you will be familiar with if you've watched Ancient Aliens or Gaia TV, spoke of us humans coming together or falling into ruin. Well, you better drop the Democratic or the Democrat shit because that is in no way helpful or conducive to togetherness. Like, you're just going to put it out there, all this great stuff, but not for Democrats because they're ter terrible and they're to blame for everything. Nope. You can't. We live in a polar world. You can't get rid of one thing in favor of the other thing. That is going to throw everything out of balance. That is against nature. But if you think about where all of this advice and knowledge is coming from that is against nature and against the natural order of things, that is Luciferian right there. If you're going to talk Luciferian, then you got to go biblical. And I have talked about this not so long ago, but when God and Lucifer had their little, uh, their little dust up, I mean, their little, it's not little. <laughs> anyway, when they had their disagreement and Lucifer decided that he was just not down with the God thing, the holy thing anymore, and he was just 
going to be a spiteful little wiener and the whole program for Lucifer's existence after that was just to befoul and literally bedevil the work of God, you know, to scorn it, to make its people bad and rotten. And so there's Lucifer worshipers, but the thing is, is once he was gone, it's not like he waited until 1970 to start being the devil. It started immediately. So it started, it's almost back as far as like religious history began. This was the case. So it's kind of cute that they're all, these are the Luciferians, but it's like the Luciferian influence is over the whole world. And that's how, what's made it hard for humans to remember, you know, who they really are, because humans are these lives that we're fulfilling in this matrix, but we actually are from, <laughs> from somewhere else, different beings. This is like a, a volunteer op, but a, a good op, like, in opposition, an op in opposition to the dark op. <laughs> the, not just the Luciferian gang that run, and run around and do shitty things at white parties. Just the whole evilness uh, sort of influencing the world. That's the Luciferian thing that we're dealing with, that we're I'm like not for it. It's like foulness and ruins. <laughs> it's not growth and love and happiness. So get out of here. I don't want that. I'm going to finish because I don't have much left here. Uh, who and what does this help? At one point in the film, David Wilcock, who you will know from Ancient Aliens or the Gaia TV channel on YouTube or Gaia TV. He spoke of us humans coming together and f or else falling into ruin. Well, you better drop the Democrat, demon crad shit because that is in no way helpful or conducive to togetherness. Love is best given unconditionally. That's pure. So, yeah, purity. Can we get back to that? Because we got a lot of this Luciferian flavored everything tinging everything <laughs> you know it's like yeah it's like a constant battle but there's help and there's help we can help each other and for my final word I'm going to talk about my cat and all of the cats because they're here pets not just cats dogs too they're here from the angelic realm and they're here to teach us lessons about love and caring for each other and companionship and relationships and that's how they're helping but my favorite ways that animals help especially cats because I am a cat person cats help <laughs> it's not, it's not the most helpful help but they will come up if you're trying to fix something and get in there with you and you know they see you sticking your hand in there so they want to stick their paws in there and because they want to help. <laughs> and that's my favorite kind of help. Okay. Um, I hope that in some way that what I said was informative or helpful to you. Because a lot of the stuff that they don't tell us, you know, the reason is really selfish. It's not so much about for the public safety or health. It's... It's more selfish than that. And that is not helpful for all of the people. But the more of us that notice these inconsistencies in the world and see strange paranormal stuff, because that is also part of the world. I mean, you can try and, you know, upright citizen, you know, stiff upper lip it all you want, but there's other stuff out there and it's not easily explained. It could be if everything wasn't kept to us, but I guess that's for another time. Anyway, have, <coughs> before I choke to death, have something 
thick and deep to think about them now. And I hope it's helpful to you in some way. <laughs> Thank you and good night.